Hi everyone, I'm Mike. I'm an animal portrait and landscape artist from the UK. And in this video, I'm going to take you through the first episode in my journey on using LinkedIn to help promote and market my artwork. So I've been selling art on the web for well over a decade now, and I've had a reasonable amount of success. I sell both prints and originals and products as well with my designs on them. I do that through my own website and also through a few other different websites as well. Had a reasonable amount of success. I've had many sales in many different countries around the world, but I'm always interested in, you know, extending my audience really. And one of the things which I've come across is LinkedIn, which is obviously a well-established website. I've had a profile on LinkedIn for many years, but haven't used it at all. And I thought, well, maybe I can use this website to kind of just you know, reach a new audience. So I looked online and there isn't really a huge amount of information out there about how artists, visual artists can use LinkedIn in order to promote their work. So I thought what I would do is just kind of start trying this and document my experience, both to act as kind of a journal for me so that I can look back and see what's working and what isn't, but also hopefully it will help out other artists out there who are looking to get their work seen by more people. So at the moment, um, I have been just very gently a few times a week for about the last four weeks or so. I've been using LinkedIn in two or three different ways. So the first way is I have just been reaching out to people I know from previous lives, you know, if I've worked with them a few years ago, but haven't been in touch recently. And I've been connecting with them on LinkedIn. And I've also been contacting people on LinkedIn that I think might be interested in my work. So I'm now up to 47 followers. About four weeks ago, I think I had about three followers or something like that. So tiny numbers, but you know, we're just starting out. And then what I've been doing three, four, five times a week, depending on how busy I am with other stuff, is I've been posting different types of content. So for example, the first thing I posted a month ago was this time lapse of a painting I created for my YouTube channel two or three years ago. Um, I paint a lot of cattle and uh, this is a black cow up on Dartmoor lying down in some heather. So this uh, little video has only had 21 views so far. Here's another little time lapse video, this time of a celebrity portrait that I created for Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Week. And again, I got 38 views on that one. Then I posted this uh, just photograph of a painting, a landscape painting, sheep and lambs, bright colours, spring. Uh, it had just become very sunny here in, in Exeter for the first time in a while. So I captioned this, captioned this one with, who else is glad that spring is here? Uh, and so 115 views of that image so far. And this is one of the things I'm finding so far, at least, is that photographs are getting a much bigger audience compared to videos. Now, that could be down to the type of videos I'm posting or the way I'm presenting them. Or it could just be because, you know, I've hardly got any audience at the moment. So the statistics I'm going to get aren't going to be all that reliable. Um, yeah, so, OK, that more, that more or less covers those first three posts. I, I am putting in hashtags to help people find it at random. If somebody ser searches for a sheet painting in two years time on LinkedIn, you know, maybe they'll come across my painting here. So another still uh, photo. Uh, but then one of the things I've started to do is just post um, little clips of paintings I'm doing. Maybe if I'm creating a full tutorial, a full one hour video for my YouTube channel, then I'll just take out a little one minute clip. And I'm calling that inside the studio. So the idea is that if somebody kind of stumbles on my LinkedIn page, they get just like a little view into the studio to see how I work. Uh, I chat away while I'm talking, so I'm describing what I'm doing and I'm giving little tips here and there. Um, so again, you know, I'm just 
kind of tuning the type of content that I put up as I go along. So that one again only had 18 views. The next uh, still photo image of a painting got 124. Um, and then I can't remember when I started doing this, but so here's another watercolor in the studio, another still photo, another little video clip, another time lapse of uh, a portrait painting. Again, I created for Sky Arts. This guy, Clive Myrie, is going to be the new host of Mastermind uh, in the UK. Um, now, again, so what's interesting is this is one of my, when I did the full tutorial on YouTube, it was one of my more popular videos. It, I can't remember the number of views it got, but it was in, it's up in the thousands already. Whereas I've only got 15 views here. So again, I don't think the I don't think there are probably that many people just proactively searching for portrait painting video on LinkedIn. But nevertheless, I still think it's quite valuable that if somebody does come across my page and they become interested in my work, it, a little time lapse kind of shows, you know, how you work and that, you know, just what, what's going on in the studio. And one of the things I've started doing with these posts is I've tried to add a little bit of extra info. So maybe, you know, it could be some, uh, you know, financier in, in the city of London. It could be a New York businessman, but maybe they're an artist themselves. So what I've tried to do with my more recent posts is I put in a little uh, description of what's going on in the first sentence or two. But then here I add a little bit of uh, info. So I've said tech tip. It's conventional to think of painting something as the sum of its component parts. So, for example, an eye consists of the white, the iris and the pupil. However, an alternative approach is to treat the subject as a pattern of abstract shapes. In this painting, I didn't paint the pupils of the eyes. Instead, I copied the shapes of light and dark that I saw that I saw and the overall impression of eyes was created naturally in the process. So my hope is that I'm not particularly good at going, hey, check out my work and um, it's for sale for this much. And, and I personally don't think that approach works very well for art. I think somebody either has an emotional connection to a painting uh, and likes it or, or they don't. They either like your work or they don't. You know, ho hopefully objectively, if you're trying to sell your artwork, you've got your work up to a reasonable standard. And then after that, a lot of it is what reaction the viewer, the viewer gets from looking at your painting. So my form of marketing is really just providing information and documenting what I'm up to. But if I can help somebody out on the way as I do that, then why not do it? So, um, so for example, you know, it needn't be anything groundbreaking, but here I put tech tip. A small filbert brush provides a wider range of marks than a small round. Um, that's something I've only discovered relatively recently in my artistic career. I used to use small round brushes all the time for my detailed work. And then I switched to a small filbert, which is a, a flat brush with a rounded tip. And I found that I could not only get nearly all the marks I, I could with the small round, but in addition, I could get a much greater range as well. So it's way more efficient when you're working small. And I still use a small round now and then when I need it. But again, you know, why not, why not help somebody out along the way? The other thing I'm enjoying about posting on LinkedIn in this way is I'm kind of dipping back into my back catalogue in a way that I don't normally do. And I'm also showcasing the different styles of work that I do. So, for example, I got 147 views on this particular post. It's just a fun, surreal painting. You know, what's going on here? Is this a tiny sheep in a normal sized flower garden or is it a normal sized sheep in, a, in an, an incredibly overgrown garden filled with giant flowers. And again, for this one, I sort of put, uh, it's nice to have a, ha it's nice to have had a relaxing weekend, but do you ever get that feeling that perhaps it's time to work on the garden? So I can't remember if I did a tech, oh, I did include a tech tip on that one as well. Juxtaposing two familiar subjects in an unconventional way can lead to new creative avenues because that's something I've found myself. Um, so I think the comment here may be part of the reason this post proved to be one of the most popular. Um, people tend to be on LinkedIn when they're at work. I posted this on a Monday. So, you know, most people who are working a nine to five in an office, um, they've got limited free time with family and other commitments. 
if they're going to look after their garden, there are going to be weekends where because of the weather or just because they needed to relax and chill out, they don't get as much done over the weekend um, as they can. So while I would like to think that people definitely like the painting, I suspect that, you know, perhaps there were uh, a few of those 147 views um, and, uh, you know, which came down to the fact perhaps that uh, they read the little caption there as well. Who knows? Who knows how it works? Um, so here's another uh, cattle painting. And then I've included a drawing here. That was the first drawing I posted. So I'm trying to show the full range of work I do, both in terms of subject matter and the media that I use as well. Here's a landscape of a local scene. This is just a little sketch that um, I wouldn't normally showcase necessarily on a YouTube video, but I just was inspired by a trip to the supermarket and I quite like the sketch. So I included that. Uh, another older painting, this one's from I think 2008. This is a fairly newer painting. I created that one for an art society demo uh, a few years ago. So again, just by describing in the caption that that's what I, how this painting came about, you're just gently informing your audience that, you know, hey, I do demos at art societies. You know, people who work in offices and or at computers and uh, wherever they work. Uh, yeah, may well be in an art society. So, so the approach I'm taking is really just to very gently but fairly regularly inform people of what I'm up to and things I've done in the past uh, to hopefully provide a little bit of entertainment, you know, and if I can pro provide some helpful info along the way, then, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world that could happen. Um, so there we go. So I'm going to try and do further episodes of the sort of LinkedIn marketing for artists videos, um, maybe once a month or something like that. We'll see how it goes. Um, I can't promise that I'm going to uh, unlock a formula for you to, to so you can make your millions, but um, hopefully what I'm trying out will help, perhaps help you, you know, just maybe give it a go yourself. Maybe it'll lead to something that works for you, or maybe it'll just highlight things that you shouldn't try in the future. That's the idea anyway, to just, again, just inform people uh, and hopefully provide a helpful resource as it builds up over the future months. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I uh, hope to see you again at some point on the channel.